Hello YouTube, Mr. Evans here with my vlog number 106. Today is Tuesday and the time is 5.03 and I cannot believe I'm saying this, but I am actually heading out right after recording this. I don't know how I'm getting out this early today. I, I mean, I, have a, I do actually, um, kind of. Uh, to be fair, I'm not leaving with nothing to do. I actually have stuff I still need to do, but I decided that really my work should flow to, to do it correctly, I really should look at like what has to be done before I can walk out that front gate. Um, because And I, I have completed all that. Everything that needs to be done uh, is done. I'm not done with everything, I'm not done with all of my grading or all of my planning, but everything else um, I don't actually have to be here for, um, nor do I actually have to get it done today. The other stuff would be hard if I waited. Um, but it's still, it's, it's great. I, I, I love it when I get to head home early. It's, it's always super nice. Um, I want to go ahead and share the wonder, oh, the wonder quote of the day, but first I was going to check in about today. Today was a good day. Um, I feel good about it. Uh, I'm not going to pretend that it was, uh, superb or just insane, but, um, the, the, only because there were, you know, issues, but they're, they're issues that I'm, I'm dealing with and I'm, I'm uh, hoping to get the proper support in, in uh, addressing them and just, yeah, I feel, I feel good about it. So, um, oh, and more importantly, I was still able to do my job. The students were still, still able to do theirs. So, yeah, I feel good about today. YouTube, um, I want to read the wonder quote of the day by uh, Claude Bernard, who, I don't know who that is, but um, whoever it is, it's a pretty good quote. Man can learn nothing unless he proceeds from the known to the unknown. And I think that this is true. You know, um, it, it comes about in uh, small ways, though. For some people, it's, it's big, you know, with teaching. It's like, I don't know. I think I'm just going to do this tomorrow. Ah, I'll try a debate tomorrow. And you're just like, what? Or at least I'm like, what? How? You're just going to, you're just going to just do it? Um, for me, it, it happens in small ways. There's these little changes that I'm like, okay, this doesn't really work so well. Let's try this instead. Um, that makes it just work way better. So uh, I'm really, really happy about that. Uh, about the changes that, like when they happen, it's like, okay, I'm going to stick with this one. Those are helpful. Um, but I actually don't want to talk too much about today because um, I realized yesterday, you know, I, I talked for so long that I never had the chance to revisit and talk about uh, Anime Club after school yesterday, which went so well. Um, so I want to tell you a little more about that. Um, I want to tell you that we decided to, well, I, I decided, I'm deciding on all these themes, but uh, the, the theme I, I covered was the intersection of anime and gaming. And so the anime I showed was Sword Art Online, which is one of the most famous gaming animes. Thinking it over now, I think I wish I, uh, I, I wish I would have shown Excel World instead, which is what um, Sword Art Online is actually based on, but fewer people have seen it, so I think that that might have been a little bit better, but in general, um, it was it was really really great. Uh, and then afterwards, there is a teacher here, another teacher at this school, who's actually written a comic uh, or you know a comic series, and it's what I think three issues in, and he's working on issue four. And um, it it just seemed like oh, and the theme of the of the comic is a character who's taken out of one world and put into another world, which in anime they call that isekai, and Sword Art Online is an isekai anime. So I was like, this is perfect. And so I, I, he came and he talked about getting his comic made and what the process is like. And then, and this part was so much more successful than I thought it would be, um, we played games as an anime club. So I set up four stations. Um, but before I did, I had to explain that, you know, anime and gaming intersect because the entire subculture is called ACG, Anime Comics Gaming. Um, so anime, a lot of people who are into anime are, are into these other things as well. But, you know, it's, it's not just like any game. Like, Call of Duty is not really an ACG game because it's just something that almost anybody will, will play. Fortnite, not really an ACG game. Uh, a game like Half-Life, 
or Portal, those are more ACG-ish. Um, because, you know, it's, it's a thing that... kind of a little bit nerdy um, playing them, and, and uh, that's the thing that the ACG culture kind of embraces. Um, I think. I, I don't know. I don't know too much about that, that, <laughs> that subtype ACG, but uh, still, that was kind of what I explained to them, and I said the games we're going to play are very ACG type games. Um, I had previously bought on Groupon a flashback arcade console. It was like 20 bucks, um, and it has a lot of the classic games. It's got Tetris and um, Street Fighter, like all these games. And it's like 50 games, I think. And so I just plugged that into the projector. I said, if you want to play some of these classic games, ACG Subculture loves classic gaming, so you can come here. If you are interested in digital gaming, like more modern digital gaming, go to uh, this table, which, you know, my Steam library has like 200 games on it. So it was pretty easy to download a few that were um, specific to, that were specific to like what this club meeting was about. Um, so I had that set up over there. Um, over here, I had set up a virtual reality station. I have a Google Cardboard and a VR helmet that I just got. I got the VR helmet just like for free at um, a conference a few years ago, which when I got it, you know, it was just kind of like a cool thing to have, but I was like, but I want to find a way to bring that into school, like in, in some way or another. And today, it, you know, not today, yesterday, it actually happened. Uh, the kids loved it, by the way. Um, and then I, I said, you know, and some people with gaming, they prefer to just do completely analog, no digital at all. And so I brought in Zombie Dice, which is a very ACG game. You find it in, like, comic book shops and stuff. It's not like Monopoly. Um, it's, it's, you know, the zombie themed, uh, made by Steve Jackson Games, same people that made Munchkin. And so several people were at, like, each station. Everybody wanted in on it. And the thing I was really worried about was that there was going to be, like, a pool of people that were just like, we don't want to do any of this stuff. Um, and it did not happen. Everybody was fully engaged to the point where I think people were staying, like, half an hour late. It was awesome. Um, it just, it, you know, it, it's true that it, you know, I, I've perhaps uh, stacked the deck a little bit here by making it a, a gaming-themed week. I mean, obviously those activities are going to be exciting. But first of all, it still fulfills the goal of introducing them into um, what the anime culture is all about, because it does include gaming um, in, that, in that subculture. And also, you know, stack the deck or not, it, it gets the students engaged. It gets them excited to be here at school doing something that is, you know, if not enriching, it's, it's at least healthy. You know, it's, I, I didn't put up any games that had uh, bad words or, you know, Street Fighter, I guess, technically, around it. it's cartoon violence. So, you know, it, it, it just felt like this is, this is kind of what clubs should be about. It's a bunch of people who have similar interests all hanging out and really enjoying doing what they love. And so that felt really good. And it felt, for me, more perhaps more importantly, like this is... This is something that I, I feel like so often when I get excited about something, just nobody else does. It's like, ah, oh, we're going to play games, you know, and then that just falls flat on people's, on people's ears. Um, and it didn't happen. The, I, I was excited, these students were excited, and um, it's just really great to feel like I'm, I'm doing things that people actually want to be a part of, you know. Um, the second anime club meeting I went to, maybe it was the third, but I think it was the second, um, some of the students walked in and they were like, oh my gosh, this is the day I've been waiting for. And it was just like, wow. It almost hadn't occurred to me that I could put together something that people would be waiting for. So, yeah, I am just so thrilled uh, at how well that went. And I'm so thrilled at how well yesterday went, which I've already talked about that, um, and how well today went. It, it's just, it's been a good week so far. And I realized that um, I never actually yesterday did the, the, uh, the top three things that made me smile. So I'm going to go ahead and include both yesterday and today in my, in my list today and just say, uh, I'm, first thing that made me smile was um, there was a... Uh, uh, the, uh, wow, what am I saying? 
the first thing that made me smile is from yesterday, which is the teacher that came in and talked to the students about uh, comics because, I mean, he brought in, like, some of the original art that he had done to get this published comic out there, which was just, to me, it felt really, really cool, and it wasn't something he had to do. He didn't have to give up his time, but he chose to, which is just awesome. Um, so that really made me smile. I'm really grateful for that uh, teacher. Um, something else I'm really grateful for, you know, in the past, I, I don't want to dwell too much on students expressing sympathy because it, 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 it's just like, I don't want to make it seem like everything is horrible for me and I'm just happy that students know it's horrible for me because that's not what it's about. It's about students caring, showing that they care. Um, which makes me feel like I'm a valued member of the community in their eyes. And uh, yesterday, I got it in a big way. So my students were like, you know, we were really upset. Um, you know, on, you, you know, when, when we saw how, how stressed out you were. And we just want to say we're really sorry. Um, just so cool. So cool of them to do that. I mean, it, it's, it's easy to act up. And it's hard to apologize. So that was really big for me, and I'm so thankful to that student. That really made me smile. And last thing uh, that made me smile is from today. <laughs> oh, man, I have to get a little specific here. I'm sorry it's um, positive, and just please know that if you recognize who this is about, um, the, the whole experience is positive. Even though the student apologized, you almost didn't even have anything to apologize for, but I'm helping this one student out, and this other student who's sitting nearby shouts out, I'm done! And I just looked, I said, ow! <laughs> and the student I was helping when I said that, like, started laughing, and it was like, so rarely do you get actual laughter. So often it's that kind of like a polite, you know, whatever, um, your silly Mr. Evans laughter. This was like, I actually made him laugh. Uh, and the other student was like, sorry, I said it's okay. And it really was, because you know, everybody's, every student has done that. Um, but just being able to kind of um, have a moment where I'm like joking around, laughing with a student, it, it, it felt really like, yeah, you know, there's a relationship here. And that's not to say there's nothing to restore, and that's not to say the relationships are perfect, and that's not to say that building them is my strength, but it's to say I'm not at, I'm not at zero. I'm not starting at zero, and it, it, it feels good that I've got at least something with uh, some of these students. Um, YouTube, this vlog ran so long, uh, as did yesterday's, and I swore I was going to make them shorter, and I suppose maybe it, it's just not going to happen. But only because um, I've got a lot to say, you know. Um, and uh, one thing I forgot I was going to mention about these, uh, this wonder quote, man can learn nothing unless he proceeds from the known to the unknown. So as I was getting ready to do this vlog, I was looking over at the, uh, the vlog of the teacher that kind of inspired these for me. And I realized that what he had been doing was looking like whole, like, like whole, like long term. Like where am I now within my teaching career? And I don't do that. I pretty much just talk about that day. True, now I'm kind of moving on to larger themes, but in general, I still dwell a lot on just that one day. Um, but that's because I think a lot of teachers, myself included, really do take things one day at a time. We, eva we stop and we evaluate. We think, where are our students now? What do they need? And what am I capable of providing them? And then they act accordingly. And so I think that's the kind of uh, teacher that I am. And even though um, there are parts of me that wish I had a better you know, long-term uh, vision, uh, for right now, I think I'm doing my best day to day with what I can. and. I think that's all right. So I will go ahead and end the vlog right there. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you have a great rest of your day, YouTube, and I will talk to you again tomorrow. Bye-bye, YouTube.